Hi, I'm Penny Crimes and I'm the author of two books about a gang of street children who I call the Gutterlings, who live in the streets of Victorian London. The first book, Tigerheart, is about a chimney sweep called Fly, who falls into the cage of a tiger and vows to free him. The second book, The Dragon and Her Boy, is about Fly's best friend Stick, who's a tumbler or a street acrobat, and he discovers the last dragon living under the streets of London. I'm going to read to you from the moment that Stick meets that dragon. Being a tumbler by trade, Stick had landed light and soundless as a feather on his feet, but he sensed that something had heard him and that the something was waiting for his next move. His eyes were starting to adjust to the low light, but he couldn't tell whether it was something very large that was trying to seem very small or whether it was something very small that was trying to seem very large. He couldn't hear anything breathing now. He reckoned it was holding its breath, just like he was holding his. One of us is gonna to have to take a breath in a minute, Stick thought, or we'll both end up brown bread. Gadzooks, who dares to wake me? Stick jumped like a jelly deal. Even to a lad who liked to deal in facts, the sound could only have been described as a roar. Not a loud roar, but loud enough to be uncomfortable and hot enough to be uncomfortable too. Something long and snake-like whipped out at him from the shadows and slithered over his skin, leaving a trail of slime behind it. It felt horribly like a large tongue. Almost like it was tasting me. Stick shivered. And then the snaky thing disappeared and there was a noise that sounded like someone smacking a pair of large lips. Stick backed away, but he didn't get very far before he hit that wall again. There was nowhere to go. He kept quiet and tried to do what he did, th did best, think. The roar had put him in mind of Fly's tiger, but he pushed that thought away because meeting a tiger what didn't try to eat you, but even let you ride on its back, that was something that only happened to people like Fly, not to a lad who dealt with facts like himself. He'd had a suspicion back then that Fly could talk to her tiger, but he'd always tried to ignore that because it wasn't possible. Besides, when her tiger roared, it didn't feel so hot that it hurt. No, this definitely wasn't a tiger. It was something else entirely. But he wasn't ready to hold a conversation with whatever it was just yet. It might, after all, not be real, a figment of what he'd heard people call imagination. Stick tried alternately squinting and then opening his eyes very wide, but he could, still couldn't make anything out in the shadows. He sniffed. There was a strong smell now of burnt dust and rotten eggs. What the devil are you? He hadn't meant to say it out loud, but it somehow slipped out. Devil? There was a long snort, so hot that Stick could feel it singeing the fraying edges of his kex. The voice of whatever it was went on. I hope you're not fool enough to hold with that superstitious nonsense. I assure you, I have been down here a very long time, boy, and never even had the least whiff of Beelzebub. Stick slapped at what was left of his smouldering trousers and took a deep breath. It ain't real, he told himself quietly. Just a bit of sausage, what's disagreed with you, and set up a, rum a rumpus in your chitterlings. Sausage? A long, scaly, dusty snout of an indeterminate colour was suddenly thrust into his thin chest, knocking him back against the wall. Did you say sausage? There was a loud, eager sniff. A sniff that almost inhaled Stick's remaining rags from off his back. It was like being sniffed by an omnibus. You don't happen to have any of that deliciousness about your person. If you do, it might postpone my need to eat you.